Welcome to World Energy. I'm David Gross, consulting geologist with Donkel Oil and Gas, and today we're talking about Alaska. You've probably heard me discuss earlier about the, our Stinson East Point Thompson prospect up on the north slope of Alaska. Now that is on the northern northwestern portion of the Anwar area, area 102, and we're just to the east of Point Thompson. And if you know from the industry that Exxon is working that area very aggressively. Joining us today is Robert Clipping, a consulting geophysicist. And Robert has over 50 years industry experience, starting originally with Pennzoil, um, working up through exploration management, and since 1980, consulting geologist in the Midcontinent and in Alaska. Now, Bob is going to talk to us about the geophysics and his mapping in the area with Stinson. The first thing that we did, we acquired about 75 miles of 2D data, and, uh, which I have worked, and uh, the quality of that data is excellent, uh, especially for the, one of the key horizons, which is our basement reflector. The shallow information is somewhat questionable, questionable, but I feel that it's very workable. The interpretation turned up a very large anaclinal feature, and that feature is located on the barrel arch, and it is plunging to the southeast, so any faulting or structural closure to the northwest is very critical. So when you look at this basement map, you wrap around these contours and come all the way up here to the final closure, and that structure is some 18 miles long. The key well is the Arco Stinson well, which of course had excellent oil shows, is located about 800 feet down dip from the crestal portion of this uh, anomaly. The big question here at first was, do we have south dip? So I went through all of the key lines, which are these north-south lines, and the more I looked at it, the more convincing it became that this bounding high angle reverse fault is definitely there. It's a fairly high angle fault, but would be up on this side and down on that side. So that alone would provide closure for the entire anaclinal trend. Now the two key anomalies which are involved in the acreage also have critical dip into that fault zone. So you really don't need the fault, but it's there and it adds to the closure. To support that, I brought some seismic lines today now the Arco Stinson well, and that's the reason we're interested, is the one that actually tested three to four hundred barrels of oil a day, and the engineers said that if the whole conditions were right, it was more like seven hundred to eight hundred barrels a day. Yes. So we know oil is here, we're just trying to figure out and that, what it looks like and how much, right? Today's prices, uh, that rate is certainly commercial. Uh, line number six is running roughly to the northeast, southwest, and you said it's to the west of the well, and what did you see on it? The well is situated approximately right here. This is going north, and you can see we're coming up dip on the data. This is the basement reflector. We have some minor faulting. This is the key anomaly area right in here, and you can see the steepness of the dip in this area, and now it's beginning to flatten out and almost rolling over on that line. Then the high angle reverse fault comes right up through here and drops that portion down to there. Now this basement rock, I, I know it's Precambrian, and there's some question, the, uh, the sandstone slash quartzite that they encountered in the Stinson well is, um, the age determination is a little questionable, but that is actually where the test was that flowed the oil, correct? So right. this map you made is actually the test horizon. That's the one, yes. And I think, you know, the data on every, each and every one of these lines 
uh, in and around these anomalies, you get a lot of interference patterns and diffractions in that basement complex, and generally those indicate fractures. And that's an important point because, as you know, Dunkel Allen Gas had um, an FMS study just recently completed on the Stinson well, and that actually uh, showed um, extensive fracturing in there. And uh, our um, engineer uh, geologist that analyzed it um, came up with several interesting zones down in the basement. So not only do we have the well bore information and the core information showing fracturing, you're saying that the seismic data is supporting that interpretation of a highly fractured uh, basement reservoir. Right. Donkel Oil and Gas also had an um, engineering analysis done on the Stinson Prospect. And the engineer actually liked a horizon up in the um, base Eocene. And I believe that you mapped that also. I did, yeah. Could you show, uh, should we go to that map and take a look what that looked like? Now, once again, the yellow is the outline of the Donkel leases. This is, that is the correct? outline of the Donkel acreage. Mm -hmm. This is the Arco Stinson well, which uh, had very good shows in the uh, base of the Eocene. And that is most of the vast majority of the acreage. Now, I know, I know that uh, the USGS did a study of ANWR, and that is right on the southern side of the Donkel leases is the northern border of the ANWR, area 1002, and actually we're up in the northwest portion. And I recently reviewed um, their 1999 report, 1998 report, and they were very interested in the northwest portion of Anwar, and they put 8 billion barrels of oil in that area with multiple plays. And it was very interesting that when they laid out their play maps, the first six plays all included the Stinson area because they actually analyzed all the way out here to the northern portion of the uh, leasehold of the state water. So they included the Stinson area in their analysis and they put play map over play map over play map. So there might be other plays in this area. Now one of the things the USGS study talked about, one of the plays in here was turbidite plays. Did you see anything in the data that you looked at that would be consistent with that type of interpretation? I have seen some of that, and that would be this wedging, like in this section right in here, where this is, well, you can even see it in here, where the interval between these events are here, and they fan out to there. Likewise, from here, and it fans out and thickens in there. So. There's a lot of added section in there. And to be just to be clear, the Stinson well comes in where down in here as far as uh, projecting onto this line? Where does the Stinson well it's, project on? It would project in right in there. So basically so the Stinson well itself never really saw this section over here that you would never. point out. No, it was way, way down dip. And yeah. so this is the interesting section is These up dip from the well. All the truncations would be all up dip, yeah. So if we want to just do a real fast recap of what you saw here, you have two horizons that mapped out quite well and very interesting. The deeper basement that had the good oil test on it and actually flowed oil, and then the base Eocene sand that the Stinson well basically had pay assigned to it. And then you're seeing other plays up dip not seen in the well exactly. that matched what the USGS said we could expect right. in this area. Well, Bob, that's pretty exciting stuff. It is. And so overall, what's your opinion of the Stinson play? I think it's one of the better prospects that I've ever worked on. Uh, the size of it is incredible. And uh, the quality of the data is good. And uh, having a well down dip with uh, that kind of oil in it, and you can get up dip, uh, you can't ask for a better play.